mention the word darkness and you have all of my attention. Okay, we're gonna keep the 180 tilt-a-whirl going here on my radar. <laughs> totally winging this because it just freaked me out. Ooh. I'm a hype girl in the sense that if there's hype, I am here for it. So, okay, let's try that again. Hi everybody, it's Audrey and welcome back to Chapter and Converse and welcome to yet another month of new releases. So I feel like last month I said there weren't a lot of books coming out and I either did a real sloppy job of first pass looking at new releases or my tastes have managed to change a whole bunch since last month. But there's so many books or I don't know, maybe pub dates changed. I don't even know. I have a much longer list than I thought I was going to have. So you guys know the drill. Get your pen and paper, get your smartphone, whatever method it is that you use to track and write down all the books, post-it notes, pencils, crayons, <laughs> all the things, <laughs> because we have a really long list of books to talk about today. So let's dive into it. So before we dive headfirst into the abyss here, I have had a few people ask me about how I find out about books that are coming out. And honestly, I just do a lot of deep diving Google research because I like to know what's coming. So some of it is straight up Goodreads has like a coming soon section that you can go and you can look months and months out on that. I'll do just some plain Googling. I am obviously knee deep in the Instagram world. If it's a specific author, I keep an eye out for them, just kind of checking when they have a new book coming out. So I kind of use all the same resources that are at all of our fingertips. And I just keep a running list to be perfectly honest. And I check it and I recheck it and make updates and make changes because pub dates still continue to change all the time. And it's a lot to keep track of, but it's kind of like a fun game. <laughs> One of my many hobbies. <laughs> so here we go. Starting with August 1st. First book I have is Just Another Missing Person by Jillian McAllister. So a lot of these books are authors that are sort of on my radar this being one of them. So she wrote Wrong Place, Wrong Time, which came out last year, which I bought. It's up there somewhere and I haven't read it yet, but I am still very intrigued to see what she does next. So standalone books, which makes it easier. Some of the books on this list are series books, but this is a standalone. So in this one, it says 22 year old Olivia has been missing for one day and counting. She was last seen on CCTV entering a dead end alley and not coming back out again. Julia, the detective heading up the search for Olivia, thinks she knows what to expect. A desperate family, a ticking clock, and long hours away from her husband and daughter. But she has no idea just how close to home this case is going to get. So it says, if you find her, you will lose everything. What would you do? And I know that Wrong Place, Wrong Time had a lot of really great reviews to it and was described as really clever and really interesting and I haven't read it yet and I like earmuffs don't want to know too much about it because I do like to go in a little bit blind. I didn't even read this whole blurb to you guys. So for me she's an author to watch partially mostly because of all the hype around her book last year and <laughs> I'm nothing if not a fan of the hype. I don't I fall for the hype all the hype. I, I'm, I'm a hype girl in the sense that if there's hype I am here for it. So that's the first one. And as always, things I should have said at the beginning of the video, all of the pub dates as of the time of me creating this video for you guys will be listed down below and also links so you guys can check out more details about the book if you're so inclined. So the second book I have is Delicate Condition. This is by Danielle Valentine. So this is an adult book. She has written YA thrillers. So she wrote, dang it, How to Survive Your Murder, which was a Groundhog Day kind of ode to slashers came out last fall that I absolutely loved, but this is her adult thriller. So in the little bit of research I started to do, I found a story from months ago that said that this is going to be the next season of American Horror Story. And for the first time, American Horror Story is gonna do an adaptation from a book and Ryan Murphy is not going to be writing the episodes for anyone who's a big fan of American Horror Story. Full disclosure, I quit on season one back in the day because it just freaked me out. So I realize I can read a lot of messed up books and I can watch a certain messed up movie, but American Horror Story basically scares me a lot. So I did watch the crime ones, but anyway, all that to say, the next season of American Horror Story should be based on this book. 
So this one does make me a little bit uncomfortable because it's kind of a horror book, but it says the push meets the silent patient and it follows a woman convinced a sinister figure is going to great lengths to make sure her pregnancy never happens while the men in her life refuse to believe a word she says. So Anna is desperate to be pregnant, but as she tries to balance her increasingly public life with a grueling IVF journey, she starts to suspect that someone is going to great lengths to make sure her pregnancy never happens. I just said that. Crucial medicines are lost, appointments get swapped without her knowledge, and even when she finally manages to get pregnant, not even her husband is willing to believe that someone's playing a twisted game with her. So there's cryptic threats, and she winds up having to leave her Brooklyn brownstone and hide in the cold gray ghost town that is the Hamptons in the depths of winter, and she is at the end of her rope. So it's could her mind be playing tricks on her? Is something more sinister at play? She's got some horrifying symptoms. And why does nobody leave her when she says something is horribly, painfully wrong? So I am definitely intrigued, but I'm a little bit scared. But I feel like I'm more intrigued than I am scared. So stay tuned. Let me know if anybody's read this one yet. I'm, I'm My antenna's very up. I will say her YA book was definitely on the dark and creepy side. So, and I loved the push and I love the silent patient. So it kind of feels like it's made for me. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. In a complete 180, we have the new Tracy Lang book, and this is the Connollys of County Down. So she wrote We Are the Brennans, which I absolutely loved. That was her debut that came out two years ago. I do have the arc of this book, which I haven't read yet, but I have three arcs coming out in August, which I'm planning to read. So I actually have the audiobook arc of this and the e-arc, so I'm really excited for it. But this one is about a fierce family loyalty, good intentions gone awry, and the consequences of improbable love. So in this one, when Tara Connolly is released from prison after serving 18 months on a drug charge, she knows rebuilding her life at 30 years old won't be easy. No money, no prospects, she has to return home to live with her siblings, who are both busy with their own problems. So her brother is a single dad, he is struggling, and then her sister's fragile facade of calm and order is cracking under the burden of big secrets. We Are the Brennans had so much great family drama to it. I absolutely loved it. So this says, life becomes even more complicated when the cop who put her in prison keeps showing up unannounced, leaving Tara to wonder what he wants from her now. So I definitely expect a lot of family drama. It sounds like a lot of secrets and lies, a lot of unraveling. Then it says, testing the bounds of loyalty and love. So I... Like I said, loved We Are the Brennans. That book made me cry. I was completely invested in that book. I loved it, like it was heartwarming at the same time, but a lot of family stuff going on there. So I'm very excited for this one and I have very high hopes for it. And then in another complete 180, we have The Trap by Katherine Ryan Howard. So I pre-ordered this from the UK. This comes out later in August in the UK, but I am very excited about this. You guys know I'm a huge fan of hers. So in this one, mm, this one sounds really, really intriguing. So in this book, we have a young woman named Lucy, and it says this is an unsettling mystery inspired by a series of still unsolved disappearances in Ireland in the 90s, wherein one young woman risks everything to catch a faceless killer. So Lucy's sister, Nikki, had gone out to meet her friends at the pub in Dublin one night, and she never came home again. And she was the third Irish woman to vanish inexplicably in an inexplicably, words, in as many years. And the agony of not knowing what happened to her has turned Lucy's life into a walking nightmare. So she's going to take matters into her own hands. And then we have Angela who works as a civilian paper pusher in the missing persons unit, but wants nothing more than to be a fully fledged member of an on Garda, the Irish police force, and I'm not gonna be able to say the words correctly. <laughs> With the official investigation into the missing woman stalled, she begins pulling on a thread that could break the case wide open and destroy her chances of ever joining the force. Interesting. And then we have a nameless man who drives through the night, his latest victim in the back seat. He's going to tell her everything from the beginning and soon she'll realize what you don't know can hurt you. Catherine Ryan Howard writes such inventive books and I feel like she can take a nugget of something and really twist and turn it into something so unsettling and so gripping. I'm such a fan of her writing and I love how 
different her books are in so many ways and how many different twists she puts on things and how like there was an element of the Golden State Killer and the Nothing Man. There was a book within a book. Runtime had a screenplay infused into the novel. 56 Days was the one in lockdown where you saw like the same situations from two different POVs. And then I have recently, if you guys watched my book haul, I think that would have gone up by now, purchased everything on her backlist. So I know that she uses different devices is not the right word, but like different means of storytelling. And I just, I think she's absolutely amazing. So I'm very excited for this one. It should get to me by the end of August and I will be so ready for it when it gets here. I can't wait, I can't wait, I can't wait. And then the last book I have for August, I actually have a physical arc of, try not to make a lot of noise. This is Gone Tonight by Sarah Pekkanen. So Sarah Pekkanen for the past few years has written together with Greer Hendricks and now she is back to writing on her own. And this is a standalone book. None of the books that she did with Greer Hendricks were part of a series, but she had written books on her own before the two of them paired up together. So this is a thriller. This is definitely a how far would you go for your family kind of a book, which is one of the things I love. So it says their bond runs deep, their lies run dark. 41 year old Ruth, Star Ruth Sterling, I'm thinking of Starling Marte, who was a New York Met, Ruth Sterling is on the run from the past while trying to hold on to her future protecting her 24-year-old daughter, Catherine. It's always been just the two of them against the world, but how well do they really know each other? And what made Ruth, a pregnant teenager all those years ago, run from her life? When Ruth's desperate quest to keep Catherine by her side reveals cracks in her carefully constructed world, both mother and daughter begin a dance of deception, one that begs the question, who does the darkness lie within? Mention the word darkness and you have all of my attention. So I'm very excited for this. This just showed up like a week ago and I'm very eager to get into it. So I have all the intentions of reading this before pub day. So stick around my channel, stick around my Instagram to get some more info on this and what I think of it. But I have very much enjoyed her books with Greer Hendricks. So I have very high expectations for that one. And P.S. Huge thanks to St. Martin's. I'm just double checking the publisher. Huge thanks to St. Martin's for sending it to me. Very, very cool. The privilege is not lost on me of getting the arc. Okay, diving into August 8th. The first book I have is Under the Influence, and this is by Noelle Crooks. This is a debut novel. This is kind of pitched as The Devil Wears Prada meets The Assistants. I haven't read The Assistants, but I'm a massive Devil Wears Prada fan. So I had seen one review and it was sort of like a, The Devil Wears Prada for the digital age. So this one is about a young woman who takes a job working for an enigmatic influencer and quickly discovers there's a dark side to being a hashtag girl boss. So we have Harper and she is broke and lonely and desperate for a salary that won't leave her scrambling to make rent each month. So when she stumbles across a job posting from an influencer offering her triple her last paycheck, she automatically submits her resume. And kind of like in no time she has the job, there's some sort of instant connection between Harper and self-help guru Charlotte Green. And of course, nothing is as good as it appears and the facade starts to crack. So she winds up moving from New York to Nashville. Harper is quickly dazzled by the world that Charlotte has built and with the company called The Greenhouse. It's more than a workplace, it's a family. And Harper soon finds herself swept into its inner circle. But it says the deeper she's pulled into Charlotte's world, the more she realizes that having it all and being it all comes with a price. So, I think we're going to definitely get a curtain being pulled back on things. I imagine there is some influence from, no pun intended, from recent events for the past couple years in media and about conversations about bosses not being all that they seem to be and people's public personalities not necessarily being the same as what's going on behind closed doors. So I expect a little bit of curtain ripping happening here. And I don't actually know anything about Noelle Crooks herself and I don't see any exact details. <laughs> I'm like, tell me she worked at Vogue like Lauren Weisberger did and had it all make sense. Maybe this is even like a pen name. Nope, not a pen name. So I will say do with this what you guys will. Under the Influence is her first book and before publishing it, she held roles at Sephora and Dolce Vita and was the brand director at The Hollis Company. I'm very excited to read her first book. Okay, the next book is the fifth book in a series. 
This is A Killer in the Family by Githa Lodge. It is part of the DCI Jonah Sheens series. Now, I have not read any books in this series. I own the first two. I almost bought the fourth one because I didn't realize it was part of this series. <laughs> but I had some self-control. And then I was going to buy the third one at, like when I bought the fourth one. It was a whole thing. But... I do find more and more, especially with authors today, so I'm not talking about like going back and reading like Patricia Cornwall, although I do feel like her newer book, she's making them accessible that you can like kind of pull in anywhere you want to. So I do think a lot of authors these days, I was just listening to an interview with Tessa Wieger where she was saying like, you can start with book number four, which is her book that came out the end of last year, and it gives you enough of the backstory of what happened and it, you can read it as a standalone. So if the plot of this book appeals to you and it appeals to me, I feel like you can probably dive in here if you're not insistent on being a purist and reading it from the beginning. So all that to say, a woman uploads her DNA online searching for her father, but the man who contacts her is Detective Chief Inspector Jonah Sheens. And it says, what might a family do to protect or expose a serial killer in its midst? So when the police found the first body left on a bonfire in the fields, they worried it had the hallmarks of a serial killer. Now as they find the second, they know for sure. So now we have the quote unquote bonfire killer. I don't know why I'm already completely in, like intrigued by this book. It's the <laughs> panic about the bonfire killer quickly spreads through the sedate suburban area of Southampton. Women are urged not to travel alone at night and constant vigilance is encouraged amongst the local residents. But single mom Aisling Cooley has a lot to distract her. Two beloved teenage boys in a quest to find her long lost father who she hasn't seen since she was a teenager growing up in Ireland. So she does the uploading of the DNA to the Ancestry website. And when she gets a match, she's super excited. But the detective is the one who winds up calling her. So apparently her DNA is a close match to the bonfire killer. So a little bit of Golden State, a little bit of Idaho. I am very intrigued by this one. I might not hesitate to start with book number five on this. So I realize that like some things will probably be explained. One thing I have also found in some of the books I have read is that they don't necessarily spoil the mystery from the prior book, but give you the backstory you need to figure out why, like where you are. I'm talking out of my butt. I don't know. <laughs> I haven't read any books in this series, but it sounds really interesting. I love the idea, not that I would ever want this to be my destiny, but like you submit your DNA to an ancestry thing and then the cops call you because you have DNA similar to a, like an unfound serial killer. <sighs> tell me you're not intrigued by this book. Somebody out there tell me you're not intrigued by this book. I know somebody out there is totally not intrigued by this book, but it kind of is calling to me. So here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Okay, the second book, also part of a series, this is Dark Corners. This is by Megan Golden. This is book number two in the Rachel Crawl series. So The Night Swim is the first book. Rachel is a podcaster, so this functions completely as a second standalone novel. I have the e-arc of this. I haven't read it yet. I plan to read it before the book comes out so I can let you know for sure. But my suspicion, well, I know that she's on a brand new case in this one. Whether or not she's going to speak at all about the case she covered in the first book. She's a true crime podcaster. I don't know, but The Night Swim came out maybe three or four years ago. I just happen to have it right here. I need to reorganize my bookshelves, which is also a story for a different day. I hate them right now. This came out in 2020. So she published Stay Awake in between. So I don't know, we'll see. But I loved this book. I reread this earlier this year to prepare myself for this one because I just wanted to refresh myself and I'm very glad I did. It's a great book. So in the new one, Dark Corners, Terrence Bailey is about to be released from prison for breaking and entering. So he's in prison for breaking and entering. I was like, he's gonna be released from prison, breaking and entering? That makes absolutely no sense. So he's gonna be released from prison. Though investigators have long suspected him in the murders of six women. So as his freedom approaches, Bailey gets a surprise visit from Madison Logan, a hot young influencer with a huge social media following. Hours later, Madison disappears and police suspect she's been kidnapped or worse. 
Is her disappearance connected to her visit to Bailey? Why was she visiting him in the first place? So the FBI reluctantly reach out, reaches out to Rachel for help in finding the missing influencer. So then there's a whole bunch of stuff that I don't even want to read. So stay tuned. <laughs> Stay tuned. But I thought Rachel was such a compelling character. I really enjoyed her. And I'm very curious to see what's going to happen in this one. But I, I don't even want to know. So that's why I include the links to you guys in case you want to know more than I do. But I'm a huge fan of Bang Golden. I also read The Escape Room, which I absolutely loved. She definitely does dark and messed up. She definitely does unlikable characters. She also infuses a bit of, I would say, kind of reality in the sense like pulls from the headlines in some ways. So I'm very interested to see what this one is all about, but I'm very intrigued. And we're just gonna round out the book series with the last one. So Dead and Gone by Joanna Schaffenhausen. So this is book number three in the Annalisa Vega series. So I have not read this series yet. I started the Ellery Hathaway series, which I very much enjoy. And I absolutely have the Annalisa Vega series. I just haven't started it yet. So I suspect, like I said, you can probably jump into this one here and not have to worry about the beginning. So if this one appeals to you, don't take that as gospel though, because I don't know for fact, because I haven't read them yet. So in this one, we have Annalisa Vega. She is a Chicago police detective. And it says for her, Sam Tran's death presents an ominous puzzle. The ex-cop turned PI is found hanging from a cemetery tree with a message across his chest that suggests someone holds a murderous grudge against the police. Annalisa suspects that the real answer lies in one of Tran's open cases. She believes he stumbled onto a dark secret during his investigation and someone killed him to keep him quiet. Her own family harbors plenty of secrets, something Annalisa is reminded of when her brother turns out to be one of Sam's last clients. Ooh. Vinnie Vega hired Tran to find a dangerous stalker on his daughter's college campus. Now Sam is dead and the stalker remains at large with Annalisa's niece, Quinn, firmly in his sights. So it sounds like we're going to get a little bit of college campus, maybe a little dark academia. I feel like Vinnie Vega is like the name of somebody from somewhere. What was Vinnie from Veronica Mars? Anybody? Vinnie Vega. I don't know. I feel like that sounds like such a familiar name feels very like, yeah, get it done, man. So anyway, she's looking into Sam's death. She's worried about her niece. We have some college campus stuff happening here and I'm very intrigued. So this takes place in Chicago. The Ellery Hathaway series is in and around Boston, also follows a police detective. And I'm very curious. I'm a big fan of her writing and I think she does an outstanding job with her female characters and her male characters. Reed Markham, the FBI agent in the Ellery Hathaway series is one of my favorite ever characters. So I'm very interested in this. I need to like get on my game big time. Okay, we're going to keep the 180 tilt a whirl going here. The next book I have is called Between Us. And this is by Vari McFarlane. So this came to me, she came to me as an author, I should say, through Becca from Bad on Paper. So if you guys saw the Instagram post, I promised I would do and I finally did about the podcasts I've been listening to lately. Bad on Paper is one of them. I also talked about them excessively in my book haul because they influenced a lot of the books I got. So it's Becca and Olivia. But Becca in particular put Mar Vari. I googled it. Vari, sometimes pronounced Mari. McFarlane on my on my radar. So kind of a comp to Emily Henry is how she described her. And since I am in my romance era right now, I'm running with it. So in this one, it says when Roshan and Joe join their friends for a weekend at a country house, it's a triple celebration, a birthday and engagement and the launch of Joe's shiny new TV show. But as the weekend unfolds, tensions come to light in the group and Roshan begins to question her own relationship. And as they watch the first episode of Joe's drama, she realizes that the private things she told him, which should have stayed between them are right there on the screen. Joe, uh, say it isn't so, Joe. I never thought I'd have such like a Joe since you. <laughs> so with her friend group in chaos and her messy love life on display for the whole world to see, Roshan returns home to avoid the unwanted attention and help run her family's pub. But drama still follows in the form of her dysfunctional family and the looming question what other parts of her now ex's show are inspired by real events. Lies, infidelity, Every week as a new episode airs, she wonders what other secrets will be revealed. 
Yet the most unexpected twist of them all is an old friend who su who is suddenly there for Roshan in ways she never knew she needed. So I am just all over this. I am all over this. I have picked up several of her books as of late. So I got If I Never Met You and Just Last Night and I think Mad About You. I'm embarrassed. I'm not even sure. Did I get Mad About You? I might have waited. There's so many books that she's written I'm really excited for. Who's That Girl is the one that I really want to get next. I've read none of them, but we're not here to judge. So anyway, if you are looking for some romance, there you go. But the top dog for August 8th for me is definitely None of This is True by Lisa Jewell. I have pre-ordered this. I cannot wait for this to show up on my doorstep. If I see one more person with an arc talk about how it's Lisa Jewell's best book ever, I'm gonna cry because I don't like to be left out of the conversation. <laughs> I just can't wait to read this. So I am such a massive Lisa Jewell fan. You know from the beginning of time, blah, 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 blah. This is her new one. So in this one, I believe we get a podcast element, which excites me. So yes, a popular true crime podcast. So we have Alex Summers. She is a popular podcaster and she is celebrating her 45th birthday at the local pub. And she crosses paths with an unassuming young woman called Josie Fair. Josie, as it turns out, is also celebrating her 45th birthday. They are in fact birthday twins. A few days later, Alex and Josie bump into each other again, this time outside Alex's children's school. Josie has been listening to Alex's podcast and thinks she might be an interesting subject for her series. She is, she tells Alex, on the cusp of great changes in her life. Josie's life appears to be strange and complicated, and although Alex finds her unsettling, she can't quite resist the temptation to keep making the podcast. Slowly, she starts to realize that Josie has been hiding some very dark secrets. And before she knows it, Josie has inveigled her way. I feel like I really did not say that word right. Her way into Alex's life and into her home. But just as quickly as she arrived, Josie disappears. Only then does Alex discover that Josie has left a terrible and terrifying legacy in her wake and that Alex has become the subject of her own true crime podcast with her life and her family's lives under mortal threat. Who is Josie Fair and what has she done? I can't wait. I know I make big chatterboxing that I'm going to drop everything as soon as this book gets here and I'm going to read it. I cannot wait to read this book. I am definitely on the edge of my seat. I need to know. I need to know what all the hype is about and I'm a mega fan of hers and so help me I will be reading this on the sooner side so keep watching. Keep watching to find out more. Okay the next book I have this is the only book I have for August 22nd and this is the new one by Jesse Q. Sutanto. I'm not done with you yet. So this is her first thriller. She is another I feel like of a crop of new-ish authors. She's not a new author but sort of a new evolution of authors who do not do a one and done kind of a book. I'm thinking of the Ashley Winsteads. I'm thinking of the Lisa Jules who pivoted her career. I'm thinking of the Geneva Roses. I'm thinking of the V.E. Schwabs. Authors who write in different genres, who write for different age ranges, who have created these amazing careers where they write the book that they want to read and are not pigeonholed into one brand, which used to be, I feel like, a very typical way, which is in no way pooping on the people who write one particular kind of book because that's amazing but people who are interested in writing more than one kind of book and are able to do it successfully author goals just author goals for me so this is called i'm not done with you yet and in this one it says some friends and friendships are worth killing for in this dark twisty suspense novel so jane is unhappy a struggling mid-list writer buzzword whose novels barely command four figures, she feels trapped in an underwhelming marriage, just scraping by to pay a crippling Bay Area mortgage for a house and a life that she's never really wanted. There's only ever been one person she cared about, one person who truly understood her, thought Talia. Talia. Jane's best and only friend nearly a decade ago during their creative writing days at Oxford. It was the only good year of Jane's life, cobblestones and books and damp English air, heady wine and sweet cider and Talia, endless Talia. 
But then one night ruined everything. The blood-soaked night that should have bound Talia and Jane forever, but instead made her lose her completely. Talia disappeared without a trace, and Jane has been unable to find her since. Until now. Yes! Because there she is, her name on the top of the New York Times bestseller list. A Most Pleasant Death by Talia Ashcroft. When she discovers a post from Talia on her website about attending a book convention in New York City in a week, quote, can't wait to see you there, Jane can't wait either. She'll go to New York City too, credit card bill be damned, and this time she will do things right. Jane won't lose Talia again. I have heard, I feel like a broken record, nothing but amazing things about people who have had the arc of this book, and I am so intrigued. I feel like this book has been talked about for months, and I can't wait. I absolutely can't wait. Again, I'm like, I'm going to drop everything. <laughs> Get my hands on this book. But I'm really excited for it. It just sounds really interesting. And sort of like this twisted, like I read The It Girl was at Oxford. I read My Oxford Year by Julia Whalen. I'm thinking about like, in my dreams, I hold a knife, like all of these worlds converging. Dark and messed up female friendships, complex friendships, and murder with some dark academia and writers. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. You don't have to tell me twice. Okay, and then let's let's wrap up the month. So on August 29th, we have three books. So the first one I have is by Frieda McFadden, which actually comes out in the beginning of the month. <laughs> totally winging this. Comes out the beginning of August in the UK, but comes out at the end of the month here. So this book is called, oh geez, my Goodreads just completely freaked out and hates me. This one's called The Coworker. So The Coworker by Frieda McFadden. I read The Housemaid, I absolutely loved it. I have The Housemaid's Secret, I haven't read it yet because I do not keep promises to myself and read the books I say I'm going to read. But The Coworker, two women, an office filled with secrets and one terrible crime that can't be taken back. As a former, former, former office worker, I love a messed up story that's set in an office setting. I don't miss going into an office, but I do miss the water cooler drama of an office. That part I miss. So in this one, we have Don Schiff is strange. At least everyone thinks so at Vixed, the nutritional supplement company where Don works as an accountant. She never says the right thing, she has no friends, and she's always at her desk precisely at 8.45 a.m. So when Dawn doesn't show up to the office one morning, her co-worker Natalie, beautiful, popular, top sales rep, five years running, is surprised. Then she receives an unsettling anonymous phone call that changes everything. It turns out Dawn wasn't just an awkward outsider. She was being targeted by someone close. And now Natalie is irrevocably tied to Dawn as she finds herself caught in a twisted game of cat and mouse that leaves her wondering who is the real victim. But one thing is incredibly clear, Someone hated Don Schiff enough, enough to kill. I love how dark and messy Frieda McFadden gets and like compulsively reading her books. So I just hear great things about all of her books too. I only read the one, I have two others, and this one is completely intriguing me. So I'll be reading it. Okay, so I lied a little bit before when I said I was done with the book series. The next one I have is The Brothers Hawthorne. This is by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. This is book number four in the Inheritance Game series. So the Inheritance Game really wrapped up as a trilogy with Avery as our main character. And then in this one, we're really focusing on the Hawthorne brothers. So I'm sure there's going to be some Avery in here, but it sounds like the brothers are taking center stage. So it says four brothers, two missions, one explosive read. I love this series. I just thought it was such great fun. So in this one, we have Grayson Hawthorne and Jameson, who are the middle brothers. Grayson was raised as the heir apparent to his billionaire grandfather, taught from the cradle to put family first. So their grandfather dies, that is the premise of book number one. Their grandfather inexplicably leaves his entire fortune to this girl, Avery, who nobody knows. Avery doesn't know Tobias. And the whole mystery is like, why her? And that's kind of how everything unravels. So 
it says, I don't want to read, but that says in case you guys have not read the other books, you definitely need to read the other books for this to make some sense. Again, you could probably come in, but I feel like it would make more sense if you read the other ones. And then Jameson is the risk taker, a sensation seeker, a player of games. And he can't resist a challenge that gets posed to him, which I'm not going to tell you what it is, because again, it reveals stuff from the other books. So drawn into twisted games on opposite sides of the globe, Grayson and Jameson, with the help of their brothers and others, must dig deep to decide who they want to be and what each of them is willing to sacrifice to win. So part of the cornerstone of the books, this is, none of this is spoilers, is the four Hawthorne brothers are ultra competitive. They have been brought up to play games to compete against each other, and they are always trying to one-up each other and win. So there's this sort of friendly competitive spirit that can get not so friendly amongst them. So I'm really intrigued to see this because we do get to see all the brothers in the other books, but we see them through Avery's eyes. So I'm excited to see the brothers through their perspectives, which I think is going to be great fun. But it just sounds like a, just like a good fun time. I'm a very big, like I said, very big fan of these books. And then we're going to round out the month with the newest Alice Feeney book, which is not rock, paper, scissors, which is what I just clicked on. But in fact, it is good, bad girl. So I've also pre-ordered this one and it says sometimes bad things happen to good people. So good people have to do bad things. So I have read all of her books except for one. I know who you are, but I have it, but I haven't read it yet. And I'm just a huge fan of her books. So his and hers is still my favorite of hers. And I very much appreciate how she is also very willing to go to a dark and messed up place. She has fun with twists. I very much enjoy her books. I had fun with Daisy Darker. I had fun with Rock, Paper, Scissors. And I very much liked Sometimes I Lie, which was her first book, which is the first of hers I read. I have read her books in order with the exception of the one that I haven't read yet. But anyway, that's too much backstory. So Good Bad Girl is about trying it again. <laughs> so 20 years after a baby is stolen from a stroller, a woman is murdered in a care home. God. The two crimes are somehow linked and a good bad girl may be the key to discovering the truth. So Edith may have been tricked into a nursing home, but at 80 years young, she's planning her escape. Patience works there, cleaning messes and bonding with Edith, a kindred spirit. But Patience is lying to Edith about almost everything. I'm having a deja vu to when I first read this to you guys when I did my pre-order video. So Edith's own daughter Cleo won't speak to her and someone new is about to knock on Cleo's door and their intentions aren't good. With every reason to distrust each other, the women must solve a mystery with three suspects, two murders and one victim. If they do, they might just find out what happened to the baby who disappeared, the mother who lost her and the connections that bind them. So it says twisty, the queen of twists, Another thrilling mystery filled with drama and trademark surprises. So I'm just really excited for this one. I also enjoy this cover very much, but I'm a big fan of her writing. And I also find her to be just like very page turny, definitely books that I want to keep diving into, books that are hard for me to pull myself away from. And she's an autobiography for me based on her past books and proof in the pudding that I pre-ordered this one. So that was a lot of books. And I have no doubt I have missed plenty of books that you guys are all excited about that are coming out this month. So let me know, did you guys get to read any of these? If anybody gets like wants to make me green with envy, tell me you got to read the Lisa Jewell book. And which one are you most excited about? What's the book that you are dropping all the things to dive into? And I will keep you posted on my thoughts and feelings about the arcs that I have and a whole bunch of other stuff. So stick around, <laughs> come on back. The water's fine, folks. So thank you guys so much for being here. If you're not following me on Instagram, definitely do that because I definitely post stuff over there, especially book reviews and such, especially if you don't want to wait for me to get it together and film a video with my book reviews. But other than that, hair in the mouth wouldn't be me if there wasn't. I hope you guys are doing great. Thanks for being here and watching and being a part of it all. And I will see you guys in the next video real soon. Take care, everybody. Bye.